Give us a sense of a vision, if you have a vision, for what might, if I can put it this way, fix Paramount. Whether it's David Ellison, the Skydance, or whether it's Apollo, what's the path forward to success for Paramount? It's fallen on sort of hard times. Well, you know, I hear prayer works, so maybe, <laughs> you know, they could try that. Because I'll tell you, if you think about the, the, the universe, we all know how the world is going to end, right? The, the sun is going to grow and grow and become a red giant and swallow up all the planets, including ours. Well, that's exactly what is happening in media right now. The tech giants, the Apples and Microsofts and Googles and Meta and Amazon, they're tech slash media companies now. And they are just dwarfing all of the traditional media companies. I mean, you think about Paramount in terms of market cap. Paramount's market cap is about 350 times smaller than Apple's. And, and, and so it, there, there's, it, it, it's, it's desperation time. However, think about this. What all of those tech giants have that the traditional media companies don't have is technology, specifically AI. Well, you think about David Ellison. What access to technology does he have? Oh, yeah, Larry Ellison, <laughs> who, who is going to be an investor under this plan if it goes through. Larry Ellison and Oracle could deliver the kind of AI and tech capability to at least get Paramount in the game and perhaps place it in a different category. As I think about the logic behind this sort of a deal, that's one of the things that jumps out that I don't think has gotten a lot of attention yet, because that's about the the only thing that they could do to really change their fortunes in a significant way. Obviously, sell off linear assets cable networks and, and the and the traditional broadcast network, sure. Focus on streaming. Yes, their, their streaming service, like all the others, is growing, mm. but it's still losing money. They project it to be profitable in 2025, Paramount Plus, that is, that streaming service. But right now it loses money. Streaming services are expensive for programming and marketing, et cetera. But you add some AI into the equation and suddenly they become much more efficient that's been Netflix's secret all this time. And so, I mean, John, as you laid out with the media industry uh, undergoing its own heat death of the universe, it sounds like what you're saying is that, of course, uh, the David Ellison did with the potential, of course, of Larry Ellison stepping up and providing some AI capabilities, maybe through Oracle, that that would be a better partnership for Paramount, Paramount than, say, in Apollo, for example. Well, sure. I mean, we know the Apollo playbook and, and that of all the PE firms that, you know, they've identified a, a, a certain uh, enterprise value, which obviously they think is higher than the 26, 27 billion that they've offered for the enterprise. And so they will, you know, put it on the market and sell off the pieces and turn a tidy profit. And, and it could end up that way because, um, you know, there is that Revlon requirement that if, you know, if, if, if this is a pure cash deal uh, and not a stock swap or anything, Thing, then you've got to go with the highest bidder. And right now, Apollo is the highest bidder. So it could go that direction. And those pieces could be sold off. Um, and that could be one path. But it, as you try to think about what, why would Sherry Redstone be uh, in, in, into considering this David Ellison path? One, maybe it's just the personal premium she's getting from this deal. But two, might maybe be some sort of strategic sensibility. And I'll tell you this, um, part of the Ellison team is Jeff Shell, who was the guy running NBC Universal, and he's a really sharp, smart, proven, capable operator who is always looking several steps down the road. And I could see a Jeff Shell understanding how to navigate these waters in such a way that um, Paramount plus uh, Oracle money plus KKR money equals something bigger and better. Think about this. I think it's time to talk about Netflix as a traditional media company. Why is that? Because Netflix is not like those tech giants. It doesn't. It, it's, it's got some sophisticated AI, but you wouldn't put it in the same category as a Microsoft or an Apple, let's yeah. say. Yeah. So it, Netflix... It, is is an undiversified right. media play. They are solely reliant on subscriptions, and now they introduce an ad uh, service, and you know, so that's helping them a little bit. But ultimately, they're in the same pool 
in terms of, of market cap and, and revenues, not not market cap, but revenues as, you know, the Warner Brothers discoveries and the Paramounts and all of that. Whereas if you think about uh, a company like Disney, which is diversified, the Disney Cruise division yeah. alone has revenues equal to Netflix. So Netflix could be in play for either one of the giants or maybe a post-acquisition Oracle plus Paramount plus KKR is interested in joining forces with the Netflix. So, John, I'm glad you raised Disney, my old shop, because one thing Disney does have is a very large library. After, after that acquisition of Fox, even on its own, it had a large library. And when you talk about AI, you talk about large language model, you need access to a lot of content, which Paramount does not necessarily have. Does that give a Disney a leg up? By the way, the big tech giants don't have access to that kind of content either. Yeah, not anymore. For a while, you know, I ran an AI platform uh, for media that Apple acquired and is now, you know, one of the main drivers of AI at Apple. And uh, you do require vast amounts of content to train these self-learning brains on. Uh, but what D Disney has the content, but they don't have the, the the brainiac engineers that you need. And there is fierce competition for those people right now. I mean, they are having seven-figure base salaries waved in front of their noses. And these are people who probably were making 120000 a year just a few years ago. And so it's, it's, it's a real tough environment, and there are very, very few players who've got the cash and the stock to wave in front of the, the top performers. And so that's going to be a challenge for Disney. Now, they, Disney did a smart thing in this Epic Games deal where that you, know, you talk about diversification. They've gotten now into that gets them into Fortnite. Uh, and they're going to be integrating Disney characters into Fortnite and all that. But still, that's just further diversification within media. And, and they're still going to have to do more and more.